Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless and for tonight's future of everything we're going to talk about ufos because it is my hope that in the near future we figure out whatever the heck has been going on in our skies and if you follow a lot of the ufo incidents involving the u.s military you might have seen a lot of people talking about several videos of what looks like a triangle seeming to hover, hover over a base out at 29 palms here in california this is all released in the last day by documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. Take a quick listen. Those are not alarm rounds because alarm rounds fall. Yeah. And, yeah. and nobody shoots in a five gun section. There's more lights around it. Well, this is weird. We got UFOs outside. Now, Jeremy Corbell and the co-host of the podcast Weaponized, uh, George Knapp, say they have been looking into this since 2021. There's another uh, image right there. He says, according to reports from witnesses, the whole thing only lasted about 10 minutes from 8.20 when it appeared to 8.30 when it blinked out. According to Corbell, it was seen by more than 50 people, many of them Marines at Camp Wilson, who captured, uh, who captured those images, but they, they just couldn't explain what they saw. If you look in the picture, you can see like a black triangular shape. Why are these not flares? Uh, because they stayed there for a solid 10 minutes, just in the same spot. And flares don't sit in one spot for 10 minutes? No, they definitely, they fall. Jeremy Corbell himself joins us right now in the studio. Uh, so Jeremy, real quick, set the scene for us here. Yeah, so this happened back in 2021, and I, of course, I thought it was flares at first. A bunch of Marines started coming to me. I was able to find them within 36 hours. They saw a craft, so this is not something lights in the sky. They actually saw the body, the shape of the craft, and you see that in the low light photo. So they basically said, you know, what's going on? What is this? And I was worried about the reporting process. We dug into it for a number of years. Luckily, they shot up lumen flares, so you can see the difference of what a lumen flare is. And most flares, they last within one minute to three minutes max. This object, or I'll say craft, because you can see the body of it, sat there from 10, some reports say up to 25 minutes unmoving. So this is why I thought it was important, bringing it out to the public, trying to crowdsource and figure out this UAP. It's just an unidentified. The point is we're trying to identify and we're trying to identify something that happened over a military base with a lot of military service members all around. Uh, we reached out to the Pentagon. I know the Marine that you spoke to said that they ruled out flares, but the Pentagon tells us that there was an airspace uh, tactics and instructor course happening around the same time. And there's video of that training. I think we have some of that video that has been declassified. Uh, you can see choppers through night vision. You can see tracer fire. You can see flares. And then right at the end, there are a couple of seconds uh, showing showing something that's in, it's kind of in a similar shape to that triangle. Uh, do you think that that could be the same thing? Some of this exercise that you're seeing right here, those appear to be flares, kind of in a triangle shape. Uh, do you think that that could be what these Marines saw? Yeah, so that's the question is, were these flares? The problem is, is the duration and all of the witnesses that saw the body of a triangular, sh a triangular shaped craft. So initially that was my thought, but over these years and working with people, it, they saw the craft itself, the body of it. And that's what you see in that low light video. Now, I don't know, it's a huge base. It's almost a thousand miles wide. So showing me a video, we need to know if it identically matches up to the time. Look, I'm trying to solve the case too. Too, but I can't discount the Marines that are telling me they saw the craft. One of the interesting things about this case is so that is declassified video that we're seeing right now of the training exercise. Uh, the Pentagon says that they had no report of UAP activity and there is a, a, a procedure now for UAPs to be reported all the way up to the Pentagon. They're saying that there were no reports given. Is that what you're hearing from the Marines? Did they ever try to file a report with the government? Yes, yeah, so that was the problem. We weren't getting information. Now, we've seen that over 
and over and over. Remember, the 2004 Tic Tac event, that UFO event was during a training exercise. The 2019 UAPs were during a training exercise. There's always training going on there at that base. So that's what we're trying to get is better transparency to move that information up and better reporting process. People should not have to be calling journalists. They should be reporting it through the normal chain of command. But that is not happening. Now, one other question. I mean, as soon as you posted that, everyone was talking about the Phoenix Lights, like one of the most well-documented UFO mass sightings uh, there's been. What did you think when you saw this? Did you think Phoenix Lights as well? Well, when you see that five section of lights that shows that there, it appears to be a very similar visually to the Phoenix Lights, but the size was about half the size of a football field when they could see the body of the craft. And that's what just keeps coming back at me. I want to know the truth too. I want to see proper reporting. But that connection between an object in the sky with the Phoenix Lights is because of the body of the craft. You can see it in the low light photo. You can see it. And that's what the witnesses tell me. So I don't know, ma'am. This is an unidentified. That's UAP. When you're reporting this stuff, you just got to try to figure out what it is. And I think the next number of days is really going to uh, highlight how th these types of investigations work. So you can't say what it is, but you can't say what it isn't. It is unidentified. <laughs> that is a UAP. But let's find out together. That's why we put it out. Asking the public and anybody else that was there to help fill in the voids. Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth, and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly, Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, astrology, and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview. 
and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the Prince of the Power of the Air, aka Satan. God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them, and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so. Tonight, authorities north of Houston are investigating the mysterious death of six cattle found with their tongues removed, but no blood spilled. As Fox 26's Matthew Cedor found out, the incidents happened less than two hours away in Madison, Brazos, and Robertson counties. Rural communities in southeast Texas now on watch. What exactly is going on here? Authorities in at least three counties receiving reports of cattle lying on their sides mutilated. Madison County Sheriff's deputies discovering a six-year-old longhorn sliced with a clean cut, hide from one side of the cow's mouth missing, the tongue also removed without any blood spilling. It's very alarming to the community. Carolyn Gardner owns a cattle ranch in Leon County. I just kind of think maybe it's some kind of cult activity. Um, with the, there's no presence of blood spilled when the cattle were mutilated. I just, I don't know how that could happen. Four more cows and a yearling found dead with similar circumstances in nearby Robertson and Brazos counties. Sheriff's deputies not noticing any signs of struggle, footprints, or tire tracks close by, while predators or scavengers wouldn't touch the remains. Doesn't make sense with uh, no tracks, no bloodshed on the ground. They didn't take any of the meat from the animal. More strange reports here in Montgomery County, but instead of cattle, these deaths involve goats. One family sharing these gruesome images with Fox 26, two goats on their private property recently sliced to death with no explanation. Now the cows had their sex organs removed. The killed cattle receiving national attention. The cattle mutilations have been going on in depth since the 70s. A lead investigator on the TV series UFO Seekers speaking with Fox News. In 1976, a police officer found evidence of a triangular shaped object landing near a cow. These tripods that exited this UFO craft followed the cow for 600 feet before the cow finally fell dead. I don't know about any alien activity, but I hope that the Cattle Raisers Association the investigators can, you know, get down to the bottom of it. A worrisome sight for many. Similar incidents have been reported across the country. What will you do if it is reported that these UFOs are extraterrestrial? Will it shake your faith? If a UFO lands and these extraterrestrials, who are fallen angels, claim to be our creators, will you believe this lie? Stay strong in the faith, brothers and sisters. This could be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving world. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. 
But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.